So, today's lecture is on the perceptron convergence theorem. Right. Now, last class we were discussing about the least mean square algorithm and uh, generally it happens in most of the classes that uh, I mean even after the class we have uh, some discussions continuing, some doubts cropping up, but uh, surprisingly for the least mean square algorithm lecture I mean I did not have uh, much of doubts uh, from the students. So, it is I uh, hope that the last class was relatively less complicated as compared to things like VC dimensions and uh, the shattering part of it. So, uh, I assume that uh, the um, uh, convergence criteria of uh, the list mean square has been clearly understood and we are now going in for the perceptron convergence uh, theorem, right. Uh, basically, the theory part of it is uh, more or less uh, the same thing that uh, we have been discussing for the past uh, few lectures uh, related to the single air perceptron. So, the uh, architecture that we are considering is as before an m input perceptron. So, we were having a linear combiner that combines the inputs like this. So, we are having the inputs as x 1, x 2 up to x m and the associated weights we are calling as w 1, w 2 and w m and this model and in this model we are also adding the uh, bias in the linear combiner directly. That means to say that we are having the input to be a fixed uh, to be of a fixed value of plus 1 and having the weight w 0 equal to the bias b all right. So, that effectively this is a linear combiner which as you know should add up all this uh, w 0 x 0 in fact here is equal to 1 plus w 1 x 1 or in other words what we have been writing all the time w transpose x or x transpose w whatever way. Now, this uh, gives you basically the output v. And if this is the output V that we are getting after the presentation of the nth pattern input, then we write it as W T n x n, okay, where W T n is the transpose of the weight vector and x n is the uh, input vector for the nth pattern that we are feeding. So, this is what the V is and then we are following it up with a hard limiter where what this hard limiter do is that this v gets modified into phi v okay, where the phi v will be transforming it into I mean hard limiting it into plus 1 or minus 1. So, this is a hard limiter that will be used after that. So, it is like a binary pattern classification that we are considering that being the simplest case and this is the output y that we are taking. So, basically y is nothing but equal to phi v. Now, this being the simplest kind of the architecture that we consider, we now attempt to solve a pattern classification problem and let us say that we are solving a two class problem, okay. in which case we have got existence of two classes C 1 and C 2. Okay. So, these are the classes that are linearly separable. Okay. In fact, uh, I mean both these classes C 1 and C 2 will be existing in the multi dimensional space actually. So, although I am just uh, drawing some representative diagram, but uh, I mean in general this is to be considered in a multi dimensional sense. So, let us say that uh, this is a pattern that we are having C 1. Okay. So, uh, supposing this one is the whole set of C 1 that we have got and let us say that we have got a set of C 2. So, supposing this is the set C 1 and let us say that this is the uh, set C 2. 
Now, clearly the way I have drawn it, okay, makes it linearly separable. Okay, I think you can just get it because what uh, we can consider is that we can simply imagine that there is a line. I mean, although in this case I am showing it as a line, but actually it will be a hyperplane, that is correct. And uh, can you tell me the equation of that hyperplane? Because we are in this case, I mean the kind of model that we are using is that for v greater than or equal to 0, we will be having output equal to plus 1 and for v less than 0, we will be having the output to be equal to minus 1. So, uh, if that is the case, then uh, can you tell me that what is going to be the equation of this hyperplane? What is the equation of that hyperplane? You see, v n is this. V n, v n is a scalar quantity, no doubt, but it is uh, the dot product of these two vectors. <coughs> that is very correct. So, here the decision boundary because this uh, hyperplane that we are imagining effectively is the decision boundary, right? And that decision boundary should lie uh, at v is equal to 0. And what is the equation of v is equal to 0 in this case? Because we have to explain, uh, express it in terms of the w's and the x. So, that means to say that the equation of the hyperplane can be best written as w transpose dot x vector. Is it correct? So, this is the decision boundary. So, w transpose x vector is equal to 0. This is going to be the equation of the hyperplane <coughs> of the decision boundary. Now, in this case, it is very clearly linearly separable, but all cases are not linearly separable. I mean, simply you could take the problem like this, let us say that this is our C 1 and let us say that this is our C 2. Okay. And in this case, we certainly cannot find any hyperplane okay, that separates the class C 1 from class C 2. Okay. So, the essential uh, point that must be borne in mind is of course, the linearly separable, the fact that we have been hopping upon again and again. Now, again we are referring to a two class classification problem. So, that means to say that the pattern set that we are having okay, must be belonging either to the class C 1 or to the class C 2. So, you pick up any pattern, okay, any input vector x that we are going to pick up okay, from the m dimensional space is either going to lie in C 1 or in C 2. And in order to train the system, okay, in order to train this perceptron, we have to take a set of patterns. So, when we, we, when we take a set of patterns for training, Naturally, we have to derive the training set from both these classes. So, we have to train it with sufficient number of patterns taken out of the class C 1 and sufficient number of patterns to be taken out of class C 2. Okay. So, let us say that for the training purpose, we take uh, H 1 as the training set which belongs to the class C 1 okay. and H 2 as the training set that belongs to class C 2. So, effectively our training patterns that we are composing basically uh, is the class H, which is nothing but the union of this classes H 1 and H 2. And H 1 and H 2 are the subsets of the actual class C 1 and C 2, because I mean certainly we are not taking every sample out of the um, uh, space, we are only taking a subset of that, okay, that is very clear. So, now that we are classifying it into a two class problem, okay, then the classification equation we can simply write given that the decision boundary is w transpose uh, x vector equal to 0, we can definitely write that w transpose is x vector is greater than 0 for every for every x vector that belongs to 
the class C1. That means to say it is drawn from H1 set. Okay. And W transpose x vector is less than or equal to 0 for every x that belongs to C2. Okay. In fact, you can doubt uh, the um, case of equal to 0 because where will we fit in equal to 0, whether we put it with the greater than sign or with the less, less than sign. I mean, we can put it in any one of them. In fact, uh, equal to 0 is the boundary. So, whether you club it with the um, uh, greater than case or club it with the less than case, that is uh, something that you can arbitrarily do. So, this is essentially the classification um, um, that we want. So, that means to say that when we pick up an x vector from the class C1, okay, we would like to have that W transpose x should be greater than 0. Right? If that is the case, we say that we have classified correctly. I mean, if we are knowing that <coughs> x belongs to the class C1 okay, and if we have got W transpose x to be greater than 0, then obviously x will be classified into C1, which means to say it is a correct classification. But supposing we pick up x, uh, x vector from the set H2, I mean which normally belongs to the class C2. Okay. So, supposing we take x from the class H2, okay, from the set H2, then W transpose, then if we get W transpose x still greater than 0, supposing we get, that means to say it is correct or incorrect, it is incorrect classification. Because if x belongs to the set C2, we should have got W transpose x to be less than or equal to 0. Okay. So, the classification that the network would ultimately do could be right, could be wrong. If it is wrong, then what we do? If it is wrong, then we need to update the weights. Okay. That means to say that if the after find feeding the nth pattern, I find that the um, uh, W transpose x is wrongly classifying the pattern, then I should update the weight so as to get a new W n plus 1. But if I get a correct classification, okay, then what is it that I am going to do? Supposing I get a cl correct classification, I pick up x from the H1 set and I get W transpose x to be greater than 0 or I pick up x from H2 and I get W transpose x less than or equal to 0. What is the updating strategy that we are going to take? Huh? Keep the weights same, keep the weights same. I mean, why are you after all going to disturb a correct thing? If somebody learns something correctly, okay, you are not going to teach him something more on that particular aspect. I mean, you can teach him uh, something else, you can teach him a different pattern, but you, you cannot say that, uh, no, you have got it correct, but still you will have to uh, relearn the thing. Okay. So, if that is the case, I mean, if you are already classifying it correctly, then do not update the weight. So, the weight, weight updating algorithm that one can state could be, I mean, whatever I have just uh, now talked of in the, um, uh, in language can now be just expressed in terms of equation as follows. So, the weight updating algorithm, we can say that, let us take uh, the nth member of the set, that means to say x n. So, we take the x nth vector, all right, as the pattern, as the input pattern. So, the updating rule says that w n plus 1 is equal to w n if w transpose x n is greater than 0 and x belongs to x n belongs to class C 1. Okay. That means to say that it is greater than 0 and x n belongs to class C 1 means that it is a correct or incorrect? Correct classification. It is following in line with this. So, we should have w n plus 1 is equal to w n and likewise we should have w n plus 1 equal to w n if w transpose 
x n is less than or equal to 0 and x n belonging to class C 2 that is very correct. So, these are the cases when correct classification is done and very rightly we do not update the weight, we keep the weights as the same. Now, let us take the different case when the classification is wrong. So, as the second updating strategy, we should say that when the classification is wrong, then what we do? That means to say that if W transpose n x n is greater than 0 and x n belongs to C 2, right? x n belongs to C 1 would have made it a cl correct classification, but I have purposefully made it an incorrect classification. So, I have drawn x n from C 2, but I have got W transpose x n greater than 0. So, it is a misclassification, it is a wrong classification. So, wrong classification means we must necessarily update the weight. So, you tell me that what should I write for W n plus 1? I, I, I think I think by now we are knowing the weight update equation. Okay, so I think uh, uh, the students here, the viewers, should attempt themselves. Should be W n minus zeta. Yes, that's correct. So it should be zeta x n. Correct. So it is the learning rate times. Uh, I mean eta times x n. Okay, so that is uh, so here we have to write W n. Uh, okay, I mean I, I think if the font doesn't appear correctly, W n plus one is equal to W n minus eta x n. Okay, if that is the case, and if we have W transpose n x n to be less than or equal to 0 and x n belonging to C 1 that is also a misclassification. Okay. In this case, what should be my weight updating equation? W n plus 1 is equal to W n? Correct. Why is it plus here and why is it minus here? Yes, yes, because we are moving in the direction opposite to the gradient. Okay. So, if we have, I mean it is, it is very clearly shown, I mean uh, by using this concept, I mean if you find that the pattern belongs to C 1, but you have got a C 2. Why you have got C 2? Maybe because your line or hyperplane actually is lying somewhere here. So, naturally you have to push it out. Okay. That means to say that you have to in this case okay, increase it and in this case decrease it. So, that is in line with the direction opposite to the gradient that we get minus here and we get plus here. So, now with this updating strategy that means to say again I repeat that updating strategy here means that for uh, uh, correct classification no updating for wrong classification just update according to the I mean learning rule, this the standard learning rule. All right. Now, based on this updating policy, we are now going in for the convergence theorem okay, or the proof of convergence. Okay. So, we are now going in for a proof of convergence, but in order to just present the proof of convergence, Okay. There are some initial assumptions that we are making. Okay. Do not think that these assumptions are directly going to affect the result. One assumption will affect the result surely that you know that it is linearly separable class naturally. I mean if that is violated, we cannot use the perceptron for pattern classification. So, the convergence must necessarily accept the linear separability as the essential criteria. But there are some extra things which are assumed for just for a simplified mathematical analysis, but we can see that if they are 
violated or rather I would suggest that you can examine yourself that if the uh, extra assumptions that we are making if we violate that, that also will lead to a convergence, but may be faster convergence, may be slower convergence whatever, but the kind of assumptions that we are making only for a guideline or only for the ease of computations are as follows. Okay. Number one is linear separability which I think you all agree that we are definitely not going to violate, okay. but other than that we are going to have two more assumptions. One is that W0, okay. that means to say the weight vector that we are using initially is a 0 vector. Okay. So, we are starting with all weights to be equal to 0. Okay. In fact, it is not uh, very uh, wrong in assuming that okay, simply because initially you do not have any clue. When are you feeding W0? Before feeding any pattern. So, you do not know that what sort of pattern you are going to feed, what the desired output will definitely be. There is no learning at all. It is just an initial assumption. Okay. So, initial assumption I mean the weights because the weights could be positive because the weights could be negative. So, that is why we are taking it to be 0 vector I mean nothing wrong. So, if we prove that for 0 w 0 equal to 0 vector it is converging means that again if we uh, take any random value of w 0 okay, it should also converge. Okay. So, that is one and the second and the other assumption that we are making is that eta is equal to 1. Okay. Again this is for the ease of our analysis and again eta is equal to 1 I should say that we are taking um, uh, more like a I mean uh, uh, conservative case because you know I mean by now you have already seen that when we take a smaller value of eta the only price that we are paying for is that the, the time of speed of convergence is very slow, okay. but the convergence is possibly more guaranteed for smaller. So, but in this case we are taking eta to be equal to 1. So, eta 1 is sufficiently high value of eta. In fact, normally we take the values of eta in the range of 0 and 1. So, if we are taking 1 and show that it is convergent for eta is equal to 1, then definitely there is no reason to believe that it is not convergent for lower eta values. Okay. In fact, I think mathematically also it can be very easily shown. I mean the approach that we are going to follow, you can yourself show that for smaller etas also this uh, should be remaining valid. So, these two assumption with which we are doing going to do the mathematical analysis are not any oversimplified assumption or we are not losing the generality in any way by making these uh, uh, two assumptions. Okay. So, now let us uh, see the, uh, that how do we arrive at the proof. Okay. Now, let us suppose that we keep on the feed, uh, we keep on feeding the patterns x n okay. and we start with n equal to 1, 2 etcetera. We keep on feeding the patterns and initially let us say that it is doing misclassifications. So, to start with we assume that it does misclassification when I feed x 1, it does misclassification when I do x 2, it does misclassification when I feed x 3, but misclassification itself means that there is a learning, learning is only there when there is error. Okay. So, you keep on doing misclassification, but if it is convergent, okay, then there should be some point, there should be some value of n where we are going to get a correct classification. Am I correct? So, uh, if such value of n exists where the correct classification ultimately results, okay, then we can definitely say that the uh, system is convergent. Okay. So, we are feeding x n with n equal to 1, 2, etcetera and we assume that x n belongs to the subset h 1. That means to say that it should be classified into c 1 okay. and we take eta is equal to unity in this case. Okay. So, that means to say that what will be our weight updating equation we take eta equal to 1 
and x n belonging to h 1 pattern okay, and we have got a misclassification. So, what should be my w n plus 1 plus yes. So, it should be w n plus x n because eta is equal to 1. So, it is simply w n plus x n. Okay. Now, this is a very interesting form and I have assumed w 0 to be equal to 0. Okay. So, what is going to be w 1? w 1 is going to be I mean when n is equal to 0. So, w 1 will be equal to x 1 x x 0 x 0 that is correct x 0. Okay. So, what is going to be w 2? w 2 is going to be w 1 plus x of 1. So, that means to say that w 2 will be equal to x x 1 plus x 0 x 1 plus x 0. Okay. So, that means to say that w n plus 1 is going to be equal to yes. So, we can write it as x 1 plus x 2 plus so on so on up to x n starting from x 0. Uh, uh, yeah, that is what is leading to yeah. Uh, starting from x 0 yes. Okay. So, this is simply a summation that we are getting for w n plus 1. Okay. But again another assumption that we are making. So, we have made use of this assumption already. We have also um, uh, made use of another assumption that w 0 is equal to 0 and the third assumption that we are uh, that uh, I mean we have started with is that uh, C 1 and C 2 are linearly separable. Now, the basic fact that C 1 and C 2 are linearly separable means that although in this n pattern so far we have assumed misclassification, although misclassification has occurred in this n, okay, but a solution definitely exists, is not it? Because <laughs> it is linearly separable, the solution exists. But only thing is that so far we have not reached that solution. Okay. So, the solution exists and because the solution exists, we can find a solution. So, a solution w 0 exists, a solution w 0. Here mind you I, I have put w as a suffix 0. So, it is different from w 0. So, let us not make this confusion. So, it is so, here this is means w at, at the iteration 0. Okay. So, this is not what I am taking here I am taking w 0 means it is some some solution a solution w 0 exists okay, because they are linearly separable. So, a solution w 0 exists for which we have w transpose w not transpose yes x n as greater than 0 for x 1, x 2, etcetera, etcetera up to x n all these are vectors. So, x 1 to x n all of them belonging to h 1. So, that means to say that a solution w 0 definitely exists which does a correct classification is not it? Is it correct? So, that means to say that uh, okay, Mm, now, we can define a quantity. So, that means to say that for w 0 transpose x n okay, to be greater than 0, that means to say that there is some positive quantity alpha that we can find out for this value. So, there should be some value for which I mean, I mean we can find a minimum value, minimum positive quantity alpha which all these quantities I mean w 0 transpose x n n equal to 1 2 etcetera. Okay. Now, all of them should be greater than some positive quantity alpha some minimum positive quantity alpha. All right. So, I define alpha as a minimum of w 0 transpose x n okay, and the minimum is defined over 
x n n equal to 1 to up to n here x n belonging to h 1. Okay. So, that is how alpha is defined. Okay. So, that means to say that if I now go back to this equation w n is, is equal to this. In fact, x 0 we can take the initial uh, pattern. I mean in fact, there is uh, as such no concept of x 0 because x 0 is not a feed. I mean it is the initial uh, state that you can take. Now, x 1 onwards to x n that we are obtaining. Now, for all these things, I mean for all these n terms that we have got, each of these n terms okay, will be greater than alpha, is not it? x 1 will be greater than alpha, x 2 will be greater than alpha, x n will be greater than alpha. So, that I can definitely put forward a case like this, I mean supposing, okay, no, not uh, not uh, not x one or x two. We'll have to multiply it by a W transpose. Yes. So, right. So here, let us say that this is equation number one. So what I am going to do is that I am going to multiply the equation one. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm I'm going to pre-multiply. So pre-multiplying, pre-multiplying equation one by w 0 transpose. All right. So, what I am going to do in this equation, I am going to pre multiply it this you strike off. So, the w 0 transpose w n plus 1 is equal to w 0 transpose x 1 plus w 0 transpose x 2 so on up to w 0 transpose x n. Now, individually what is w 0 transpose x 1's limit? what is its bound? It must be greater than or equal to alpha. What is w 0 transpose x 2? That is also greater than or equal to alpha. So, what is the bound on w 0 transpose w n plus 1? Greater than or equal to n l plus, uh, I mean uh, greater than or equal to uh, n alpha. Yes. So, we can say that multiplying both the sides of equation by w 0 transpose, w 0 transpose w n plus 1 is equal to w 0 transpose, I mean I am just expanding the step, uh, I mean in case you have not got uh, the uh, thing that I was talking about just now. So, our summation series would look like this w 0 transpose x n and because individually all these th terms are greater than or equal to alpha. So, that is why w 0 transpose w n plus 1 okay, is greater than or equal to n alpha. Okay. And this let us understand is a very important bounding expression that we have got. So, I will call it as equation number 2 okay, which definitely gives us some limit about this w transpose. Okay. And let us remember this result that we have got from this analysis. So, what is, yes please, any, any? Zero to n, yes. So, I, 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 I am not considering the case x 0 because x 0 is a trivial. My, my patterns are n patterns, I am starting with x 1. Okay. So, uh, this is w transpose uh, w n plus 1 whose bound I have got to be greater than or equal to n alpha. So, this is the approach that I have got from where? I mean we have basically assumed a misclassification occurring for n number of times and shown that if that is the case then w 0 transpose w n plus 1 must be greater than or equal to n alpha. Now, there is another route by which we can try to attempt the bound. Okay, before we go in for that, okay, let me also uh, discuss more on this. So, this is a very interesting bound that we have got. Now, in, on this equation 2, if we apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, if we apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, then you see on the left hand side of it, we are having w 0 transpose w n plus 1, all right, which is a uh, 
I mean which is itself a dot product a scalar quantity and going by the Cauchy Schwarz inequality, we should say that if we individually take the norms of these two vectors, if we take the uh, squared norms of W 0 transpose and W n plus 1 and if those squared norms are uh, multiplied together, then that should be greater than or equal to the W 0 transpose W this dot product that you are getting square norm of that okay, square of that rather. Okay. So, in other words in, by using Cauchy Schwarz inequality, using Cauchy Schwarz inequality, we can write norm of W 0 square times norm of W n plus 1 square is greater than or equal to this quantity, this being a scalar quantity W 0 transpose W n plus 1. So, it is W 0 transpose W n plus 1 all right this square. So, this is Cauchy Schwarz equi uh, inequality and we know the bound on W 0 transpose W n plus 1, what is that? That is greater than or equal to n alpha, uh, I mean this, this term is greater than or equal to n alpha means this square term is greater than or equal to n square alpha square. So, we can definitely write W 0 square <coughs> W n plus 1 norm square is greater than or equal to n square alpha square, correct? So, that now, we can get W n plus 1 norm square to be greater than or equal to n square alpha square by norm of W 0 square. Is it correct? Pretty simple. So, this is what we have got as a bound for W n plus 1, because ultimately that is what we are looking for, is not it? That what is going to be the bound on this W n plus 1 and just see as if it is going to suggest something very alarming. That means to say that we keep on increasing n, okay. supposing we keep on increasing n, that means to say that the weights will keep on increasing in magnitude and exponentially. I mean it is, it is basically n square and it must be greater than or equal to this. So, this is something to feel alarmed of. So, we were thinking of uh, showing convergence, but are we really going in for a convergence like this? Okay. But okay, we have got this expression correct and let us remember this that we have got an equation 3, which we treated as an alarming equation. And now, let us take a second development route, an alternative route that we have, that we explore. So, the alternative route we take as follows, again we consider a series of misclassifications to start with, right. So, we take that W k plus 1 is equal to W k plus x of k for k equal to 1 to n and x k belonging to Belonging to what? You are not attentive. Belonging to H 1. I mean this is basically the misclassificational update. I mean same thing that we had written uh, last time also, is not it? Last time also we, we, we began with this. So, there is nothing new that I have written. Only thing is that I just put the index to be k, k is equal to 1 to n and x k belonging to h 1, but there is a misclassification. Because this uh, there is a misclassification, that is why I could write that. Now, in the earlier case what I did? Earlier case I iteratively took, I mean k is equal to uh, 1, 2, etcetera, etcetera, I kept on taking. Okay. In fact, one of the things that we did a little wrong is, okay, we, we took k is equal to okay, w 0 we started with, uh, but ultimately the patterns are k is equal to 1 to m that we are feeling. Anyway, so uh, uh, here um, uh, instead of going in that iterative way that uh, 
we first compute w 1, then compute w 2, then compute w 3 and then expressing the last w n plus 1 which we have already done and seen. Okay. Instead of doing that, let us take this equation on its own and let us obtain the squared Euclidean norm of both these sides. So, take squared Euclidean norm of both the sides. Easy. What you are going to do is the left hand side you are going to multiply by W transpose k plus 1, the uh, right hand side you are going to multiply by, uh, pre, pre, pre multiply by W k plus x k whole thing transpose or rather to say W k transpose, I mean, I mean, I mean W transpose k plus x transpose k you are going to pre multiply with that. So, you, you know what you are going to get. So, we can directly express it, I, I, I think that we need not have to expand it. If you have doubts, please do not hesitate to ask me. W k plus 1 is going to be equal to W k square okay, plus, yes, please, please go on, x k norm square plus twice, correct, twice W k transpose dot x k, correct, very correct. Now, we are assuming that the perceptron incorrectly classifies. So, our I mean basic assumption is that perceptron incorrectly classifies, classifies for k equal to 1 to n. So, because it incorrectly classifies, what can we say about this W k transpose x k? Less than 0, yes, less than 0. So, W transpose k x k is less than 0. So, if W transpose k, if, if W transpose k x k is less than 0, in that case what can we say about the relationship between the left hand side and the first two terms of the right hand side? Smaller than that, definitely, because w k x k is less than 0, that is why it is subtracting from what I have got as w k x k. So, definitely w k plus 1 should be less than or equal to w k plus 1 norm square should be less than or equal to this square plus this square. So, we can definitely write, because misclassification has happened, we can definitely write that w k plus 1 square is less than or equal to w k square plus x k square, right. Or equivalently we can say that w k plus 1 square minus w k square is less than or equal to x k square. Now, this is a very interesting expression. You see, now we are going to apply this equation, okay. we are going to just apply this inequation rather for k is equal to 1, 2, etcetera. You put k is equal to 1, what you get? w 2 square minus w 1 square less than or equal to x 1 square. You take k is equal to 2, what do we get? w 3 square minus w 2 square less than or equal to x 2 square. Add them together. Okay. So, you have x 2 square here minus x 2 square there all cancelling out. It is only the last term minus the first term that you are going to get. And okay, if you are taking yeah, initial weight assumption w 0 is equal to 0. So, definitely that finally leads to the fact that uh, if we uh, go on iterating this, then w k plus 1 square okay, that should be less than or equal to summation of x k square, x k square where we sum up for k is equal to 1 to n. 
okay. W 0 square is in this case 0, because uh, um, k is equal to yes, I mean always we land up in a this index 0 is always a problem. Yeah. If we if we go on for k is equal to 0, 1, etc., yeah, but the pattern is not fed for k is equal to 0. So, that is why for the pattern we sum up for k is equal to 1 to n, but yeah, take take that as 0. So, here we are getting w 0 square to be equal to w 0 square is equal to 0. So, here we can write that w k plus 1 square is equal to summation x k square. Okay. And this is uh, something that uh, we can um, uh, tell that here w k plus 1 is definitely less than or equal to here, less than or equal to this quantity. So, which means that if we define, yes, any, any doubts? w n plus 1, yeah, 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 you are right, you are right, w n plus 1, ah, why am I writing k plus 1, very correct, thank you for pointing out. So, w n plus 1 square, so, I mean we have already got one expression of w n plus 1, mind you, we, I mean remember this and now we are going to get something new over here and one new thing that we are getting is earlier it was greater than or equal to something whereas here it is less than or equal to something and something how conveniently we can express. So, let us uh, define a positive quantity, I mean norm of x square is definitely going to be positive, is not it. So, let us define beta as a positive quantity which is going to be the maximum of this x k square okay. and where do we define x k? This x k all belong to the space h 1. Okay. So, x k is picked up from the space h 1 and we are taking maximum value of that as beta. If we take the maximum value of this to be equal to beta, then naturally x 1 square is going to be less than or equal to beta, x 2 square less than or equal to beta like every x k square is going to be less than or equal to beta. So, that in effect what is the bound that we are getting on w n plus 1 square less than or equal to n beta, yes. So, what we are getting is that uh, w n plus 1 square okay, is less than or equal to n beta okay, and let us call this as equation number 4. So, we have got equation number 3 and we have got equation number 4. The interesting observation is that equation number 4 puts a bound which says very interesting thing that w n plus 1, I mean as you increase n, okay, the w n plus 1 square is linearly decreasing, I mean you uh, I mean not that, I mean it, it is it is linearly increasing with n, I mean its bound is, I mean it is it is going to be less than or equal to n beta. So, it is specifying a, uh, a lower limit according to equation 4 and according to equation 3 it is specifying an, no it is sorry other way, it is it is specifying a lower limit from equation 3 and it is specifying an upper limit from equation 4. And is it going to be, I mean this equation number 3 and equation number 4, these two that I have shown, okay, are they going to be consistent for very large value of n, let us say? It will be impossible to satisfy both equation 3 and 4 simultaneously at very large value of n, because at very large value of n, this lower bound is going to be very high whereas the upper bound is going to be low. So, that is why we must have some point okay, at which, I mean which is the limiting case that both 3 and 4 get satisfied. And let us say that there is some n 
which we can say that n equal to n max n equal to n max okay, at which both 3 and 4 are satisfied with equality sign. Okay. So, that means to say that n max is the solution of what? Let us uh, again have a look at this. So, we must uh, put n max in place of n over here. So, here this leads to n max square alpha square by w 0 square and that should be equal to n max times beta. So, we must have n max square alpha square by w naught square okay, equal to n max times beta. If we satisfy both 3 and 4 at the point n equal to n max with the equality sign. Okay. So, from here we can obtain the limit on uh, the n max. Okay. So, we obtain what? So, we obtain here that n max is going to be equal to beta w 0 square by alpha square. Okay. This is the limiting value of n. So, that means to say that after this n is reached okay, or this is the upper limit on this n. Okay, beyond which there will not be any further updating of the wave, meaning that by the point n equal to n max, okay, we have achieved a correct classification. We began with incorrect classification and at n equal to n max or maybe earlier than that also, okay, we are going to have a situation where the incorrect classification will be replaced by a correct classification and that is the convergence that we are aiming for. So, that means to say that the perceptron, so this is called as the uh, fixed increment convergence theorem. Beta, no, here see we are satisfying 3 and 4 simultaneously. Yeah. So, 3 and 4 can be only satisfied up to a limiting value of n okay. and that is what we are taking it to be n max. Now, we just state this fixed increment convergence theorem. Okay. Now, what it says is that uh, we have some n 0 which is less than or equal to n max. n max is an upper bound that we have got, but we have got n 0 less than or equal to n max for which we have w n 0 equal to w n 0 plus 1 equal to w n 0 plus 2 so on. Okay. So, this is ultimately the solution vector. So, here all these are equal means it is a convergence, it has reached a convergence. All right. So, um, uh, that is uh, what uh, uh, for today because we are running short of time. The convergence theorem aspect more or less we have covered. Okay just one or two small items remaining to that and then we are going to take up another very interesting case where we will be taking up the classical one of the classical classifiers which is the base classifier and we are going to show a relationship and uh, an interesting relationship between the base classifier and the perceptron that will be in the coming class. Thank you very much.